Welcome to Texas State University's Chemistry 2342 Organic Chemistry 2. I'm your guide, Dr. David Irvin, and we'll continue on with Chapter 3, Part 3, Conjugated Unsaturated Systems. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at reactions of isolated and conjugated dienes and look at their differences in their reactions and their reactivities. So in reactions with isolated double bonds, they're carried out just like those of regular alkenes. And what we can see is we get like additions across those double bonds to give us our addition products. So in the case of our uh, isolated double bond here, we have can add across it HBr, and it will react with either of these dienes in equal portions. Therefore, if we just added one equivalent, we get a mixture of products. But if we add an excess of HBr, we'll get addition products over both of these isolated double bonds. And of course, the bromine is going to go on the more substituted carbon following Markovnikov's rule. Hydrogens go to the more hydrogenated side, and the bromine will go to the more stable carbocation. Okay. If we have conjugated, uh, if we have isolated double bonds, and we have a difference in reactivity, we can actually get to uh, specificity because of the formation of a more stable double bond. So in this case here, we have a monosubstituted alkene. Over here, we have a trisubstituted alkene. So that's gonna give us a tertiary carbocation as our intermediate. This is gonna give us a secondary carbocation our intermediate. Therefore, we do have a place that'll have a reactivity difference. And therefore, the HCl will add across the more substituted double bond, giving us our major product being the uh, substituted, more substituted double bond is gonna be more reactive. In the case of conjugated systems, we actually see a different reactivity, okay? So if we take this 1,3-butadiene, and that's our, our conjugated system, and we add across it just chlorine, and we add one equivalent, we don't just see one product. We actually see two products, and the two products are the one where the chlorine adds across one of the double bonds by itself, and then to give us our 1,2 addition, where it's just adding across one double bond, both chlorines appearing on either side of that pi bond, and the other pi bond is unaffected, or we see an addition where we get a chlorine on one end of it, a moving of the double bond, and a chlorine at the other location of the double bond. We call that one four addition products, okay? So we can do that same thing with any other addition product across uh, our um, double bond. In this case, of course, we have to follow Markovnikov's rule where the hydrogen goes on the end and then the bromine can either appear in the two position or the bromine appears in the four position. However, the hydrogen will always go to the one position, okay? So in the case of the one four addition, we call that the direct addition. It adds only across a single double bond. In the one four addition, we call that conjugate addition meaning we've added one, we've moved the double bond, and we've added to the four position, okay? But to understand this, we have to look at the mechanism. Okay, so in the case of butadiene, the first step in this addition reaction across the double bond is the, ele the electrons from the pi cloud acting as a nucleophile, reaching out and forming a new sigma bond with the hydrogen of the HPR, okay? When it does this, the hydrogen always goes to the less substituted carbon to generate the more stable carbocation. Okay, when we were talking about uh, this resonance stability, we noticed that a carbocation is sp2 hybridized and has an empty p orbital. We have that empty p orbital next to p orbitals of the double bond. So what can happen is we can get resonance stability and that double, and that carbocation can be shared across these two carbons, the two carbon or the four carbon. So now we have a choice of if the bromine attacks the two carbon when it's in this resonance state, we get the one, two addition product. If the bromine waits around and goes to the four position, we get the one, four addition product. Note that we never form this primary carbocation, so we don't form that product at all. Okay, so now that we have a reason for us to have that 1,4 addition, let's look into it in a little more detail, okay? 
So when we talk about these, we have to think about what the reaction conditions are and how to change a 1,2 into a 1,4 and back again. So if we do this reaction at a low temperature, we end up with the 1,2 addition product being the majority of the product form and the 1,4 being a minor component of the system. However, at higher temperatures, we can shift that to be the 1,4 product is the primary or the major product, and the 1,2 is the minor product. Okay. So to understand this, we need to go back and think about thermodynamic versus kinetic control. Okay. So to remind ourselves, the kinetic product is the product that forms most rapidly. In the case of a 1-2 versus 1-4 addition, the 1-2 is the one that forms more rapidly. It's always the kinetic product. Okay. So the thermodynamic product, in contrast, is the one that makes the most stable or the lowest energy product right there. So to have a kinetically controlled reaction, those are reactions that produce the kinetic product as the major product. A thermodynamically cold reaction is one that produces the most thermodynamically stable product, okay? Sometimes the most stable product is also the kinetic product. Uh, so you can't just have one or the other, you can actually have both. So in the electrophilic addition of conjugated double bonds, there are both kinetic and thermodynamic product that can be changed based on the reaction conditions. So we can take our uh, addition of HBr across our conjugated diene and generate primarily our kinetic product or our thermodynamic product based on our conditions. So let's look at an energy diagram and figure out why that's true, okay? So if we remember our energy diagrams, we have our reaction coordinates as we go over here and our energy as we go up here. So our starting material started a certain amount of energy and then through the first activation energy, we form our carbocation with our first addition of the hydrogen to one of our double bonds, okay? That's gonna generate our cation, uh, allylic cation here. And so that's gonna uh, go back and forth between the two carbon and the four carbon. So if the bromine attacks this position, that's going to be our 1-2 addition. And if the bromine attacks this position, that's going to be our 1-4 addition. Notice that the energy required to do the 1-2 addition is lower than that of the 1-4 addition. And when we come down to its product here, the energy of the product is higher than the energy of the 1-4 addition product. Okay. So because this took less energy to do, it was a faster reaction and therefore it's the kinetic product, okay? If we look at the other, uh, the 1-4 addition, it took more energy to do that 1-4 addition. However, the product is lower in energy than the 1-2 product. If the product is lower in energy, that means it's the thermodynamic product, okay? It's the most stable product. And I'll give you a hint, the reason it's more stable is this is an, a mono-substituted double bond. This is a di-substituted double bond. Di-substituted bond, the more substituted double bond is, the more stable it is. Okay, so let's look at this again as a function of kinetic versus thermodynamic control. In the case of butadiene, we have our kinetic product is the one, two product because it's proximity to where the reaction happens. And our 1,4 addition is our thermodynamic product. Okay. At low temperatures, the reaction is irreversible, meaning that once we form a product, it's stuck, it does not move. And therefore, the product that forms most quickly is the major product, okay? If there's enough energy for, there is only enough energy for the forward reaction and not for a back reaction to get back to that allylic cation and therefore only the kinetic product, the one that happens faster, is the major product. Okay. However, in a thermodynamically controlled uh, product, the reaction is reversal. We can form that one, two product, and then we have enough energy to go backwards in the energy diagram to give us our allylic cation back. Well, if we have our allylic cation back, then we can actually go in the forward reaction, and therefore, 
it will keep going back and forth, back and forth until the more thermodynamically stable product is formed, okay? So a reversible rea irreversible reaction does not have enough energy to go back to the allylic cation. In the reversible reaction, we have enough energy to allow it to go back to that. Therefore, the thermodynamic product, we can wait around until the thermodynamic product is formed. Okay, so why are 1,4 addition products typically more stable than 1,2 addition products? Okay, I gave you a hint when we looked at that energy diagram. If we look at the 1,2 addition right here, we have a, our result is a mono-substituted alkene, okay? In the case of our 1,4, we now have two different groups attached to our alkene, therefore it is more substituted. The more substituted product is the more thermodynamically favored product. Okay. So why are 1,2 additions formed faster than 1,4 additions? It has everything to do with proximity of where the bromine is when that cation is first formed. Okay. So when we do that first addition, when those electrons from the pi reach out and grab that hydrogen, form that new double bond, that bromine uh, anion is formed right next to where that carbocation formed, okay? So it is the kinetic product because it's already right next to where the positive charge is forming. And then it can reach out and attack as a nucleophile and form that new sigma bond, giving us this proximity, giving us the kinetic product, okay? But it would have to drift through space to go to attack the other carbon here, the other carbocation, and so that means it takes time for it to move over and transition. Therefore, the 1-2 addition product is the kinetic because it's already close to the cation. Okay, so let's talk about the last bit of thermodynamic versus kinetic. Okay, The 1-4 product does not always have to be the thermodynamic product. Okay, Remember, we're talking about what's the stability of the double bond at the end of the reaction. Okay, so let's take this compound right here and look at the thermodynamic versus the kinetic products right here. And so the kinetic product is going to be the one that's kind of the least hindered one. So this is more hindered. So this one's going to react first. These, this double bond is going to reach out and grab that hydrogen to generate that carbocation. And when it does that, it has the opportunity to form the 1-2 the, the product, which gives us this. So Kinetically, our 1-2 product is already favored, right, because of proximity, right? So <clears throat> let's look at what the 1-4 product is. Why is the 1-4 product not thermodynamically favored? Okay, if we look at the substitution on the 1-4 addition product here, we have a di-substituted alkene, okay? If we look at the substitution on the other product, we have a tri-substituted alkene. Okay, so this is the more substituted alkene, therefore it is more thermodynamically favored than the di-substituted alkene. So in this reaction, the 1-2 addition is not only the kinetic product because of proximity, but it's also the thermodynamic product because of the multiple substitutions on the double bond. Okay, so in summary, thermodynamic product, you look for the more substituted alkene, the kinetic product is always the one to addition. Okay, and that concludes uh, this part of chapter 13, part three.